everybody. Welcome to Therapy Dog Talk. My name is Sherry. My pup's names are Sunny and Riley. And each week we talk with different therapy dog teams and researchers around the world about the impact that they're making in their area. If you're just getting started or you're not sure where to get started, we have a free guide that you can find at freeguide.therapydogtalk.com. And we also have a community you can join at community.therapydogtalk.com. I'm very excited to have Kentucky and Derby on today. They are a therapy dog team in San Diego through Love on a Leash. And they also do all kinds of other fun things together, like joining the Pack on Prime and surfing. Hi. Hey, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Very good. Thank you for having us. Thank you so much for joining. I'm really excited that this worked out. Yeah, totally. We've been having a busy schedule, but we love fitting everybody in. That's awesome. Yeah, Sarah and Coco actually recommended to you. They're another um, San Diego Love on a Leash team. Yes, we love all our Love on a Leash members and everything. Get to go out to all the nursing homes and hospitals and schools. It's so fun. Awesome. Well, Kentucky, for those who don't know you, which might not be very many people, can you go ahead and introduce us to yourself and to Derby? Yeah. So my name is Kentucky, and this is my 11-year-old golden doodle, Derby. <laughs> As you can tell, Derby and I love to do the matchy-matchy. Usually mine here is blue also, but we both have blue mohawks. But we live in San Diego, California, where we are a therapy dog team for Love on Leash here in San Diego. And we also are a surf dog team that surf in dog competitions up and down the California coast, including Hawaii. That is very cool. Yeah. <laughs> we it. like adventures, but we also like to have fun with everyone else. That's very cool. And I know you are also on the pack with my friend Nicole, too. Yes. So we got to be on three years ago in 2020. We got to be on an amazing show called The Pack on Amazon Prime where it's just like Amazing Race, but with your dog. And me and this guy traveled the world trying to win a half a million dollars, just being goofy and trying to figure out clues and trying to find the finish lines in different cities all over the world. Well, I checked it out and it looked like you definitely had a blast. My sister totally nerded out. She saw me share the banner for this today. Yes. And she was like, they're my favorite team from the pack. Have you seen the pack? (laughs) Yeah, we had so much fun. I think Derby and I were just kind of there to have fun. And we didn't realize as far as we were going to make it to the end. But like we were just there to have fun and experience something that I would never been able to do with my dog ever, even if we had won. (laughs) That's very cool. Well, Kentucky, how did you first find out about therapy dog work? So Derby has always been a special dog to me. I always felt like he wanted to like be next to people. It's one of the things when I got Derby when he was a year and a half from a loving family in Atlanta that he didn't know that there were other people and dogs in the world. But after being with me and I kind of got his confidence boosted up and he realized like, oh, if I go up to people, they'll pet me. Like, I love that. Yeah. And it kind of boosted his mental health and his confidence. And I wanted to share that here in California. One of the things I noticed is like there were more therapy dog groups here on the West Coast than there were on the East Coast. <laughs> so yeah, well, I'd asked around and Love on a Leash is a Great organization here in Southern California, and we signed up and wanted to know more about it. A couple of the surf dogs that we used to surf with actually were part of the organization, and a few of them now have just joined that we surf with. So yeah, it was awesome. That's very, very, very cool. So how old was Derby when he started volunteering as a therapy dog? We would just got off the pants. That was three years ago. So he was already probably about 10 or 9. Okay. I wanted to start him out a little older. We were doing a lot of just stuff on our own. Plus, me moving out here to San Diego was a time for me to reflect and try to f- figure myself out. So I had to figure myself out what I was doing in life and my mental state to be able to help other people. And once I had, we figured that out and got Derby together and we wanted to share what we knew and our love to other people. Very cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Did he need any additional training at that point, or was he pretty much just already a great dog for therapy dog? (laughs) Well, Derby and I already used to, like, travel around. We used to fly back and forth. So he was already pretty well-trained in, like, being around people, being around other dogs, and just knowing when it's time to work, when it's time for play. Uh, Yeah, so he didn't really need much. I think our first two, because we do, like, 10 visits that are supervised Mm -hmm. before you can become a therapy dog. And like after the second visit, all the people were like, 
man, he's got this. He's already a pro at this. <laughs> That's awesome. Very cool. What kinds of places do you like to volunteer together? Oh, we love schools <laughs> if we can. Kids are more our thing, but nursing homes is also really cool. One of the things that I would love to tell you about is when we became a therapy dog team, it was during kind of like COVID, like 2021. Yeah. And not a lot of events were going on, but there were a few that were requested by Love and Elise and Derby started. One of them here in San Diego was the Civic Center, where at the time there were a lot of refugees coming up from Mexico, but also from like Honduras and Central American countries that were coming up. Our facility was holding all the girls from six to 18 here in our Civic Center. Now there was these all over the United States. And that was where we started as our first business. Okay. All these girls coming up, none of them spoke English. A lot of these girls were on their own or with their brothers and sisters and didn't know where they were going to go next. They were searching for their family here in the United States and trying to talk to their families still in other countries. And I can understand being scared, not knowing what's going on and what your future holds. But when you see a dog, that was, you know, it's universal language of just smiles and everything. Yeah. One of the ones that caught me that I knew that this was meant for me and Derby was at one of the stations when we go was the phone call room. Okay. And this phone call room was where the girls would go in and try to either call their parents back home or try to call their relatives here in the United States. When they come out of that room, they're not very, you could see in their faces, either they couldn't get a hold of anybody or they just don't know what's going on. And I remember this little girl came out, just tears in her eyes, kind of sat in the hall by herself. And I didn't have to say anything. And I just kind of looked at her and just kind of pointed at Derby and she just gave me a knock. So I took Derby over there and Derby just went in and she gave Derby a hug and started petting her. I did nothing. All I did was hold a leash and Derby was doing what I wanted him to do. And what he wanted to do is just make this little girl feel better. And I until I realized this is what I want to do. I want to share this fluffy guy right here with as many people as possible and brighten up their day and put smiles on people's faces. I love that. I love that you didn't even need to know each other's languages. You could just play at Derby. He's quite but literally yeah. love on a leash, huh? <laughs> <laughs> literally, I was just like, this is all I have to do. This is what I want to do. But yeah, it was so amazing. I was so proud of him. And just like, this is what we want to do now. That's awesome. I know that you guys are traveling coming up, right? Because I think I saw that you were looking for places to do therapy dog work on the road. Do you do that often? Oh. We try to, but right now what we're doing is we're promoting our new children's book. So our new children's book is called The Adventures of Derby, California, Derby Learns to Surf. My wish is for this to be my new job is for us to travel around the United States, read our book, go to hospitals, go to nursing homes, go to schools, and just, you know, like I said, put smiles on people's faces. So we are going to the East Coast to do a mini book reading tour. We are stopping at some places at uh, a senior citizen home in Kentucky. Okay. We are going to uh, Humane Society in my hometown of Kentucky and kind of help them raise some money. So, yeah, whenever we are asked to be somewhere, we try to make it happen. That's very cool. I love yeah. that. What's your book about? No, our book is our self-published book called The Adventures of Derby, California. Derby Learns to Surf. It's a mostly true story of how Derby and I met, moved to California, and started surfing in dog competition. It's been a labor of love. I, I never thought this is something I would do. Trust me, from where I came from to where I'm now, I'm like, oh, yeah, I read books to kids. And I'm like, pretty awesome. <laughs> and there's a so like, coloring book too, right? Yeah, we have a coloring book of it. It's basically the same book. But, you know, we love getting pictures from kids who get the book and show what they colored. I always tell them, I said, you can change up our Mohawk colors if you want. So, you know, it doesn't always have to be blue. Yeah. Have they colored any other color besides blue? I have not done his any different because the vegan hair dye that my groomer uses, it would have to grow all the way out and then we'd have to change it. And we do a lot of events, so it's kind of hard to do that. Plus, once it grows out, his roots start to show and he gets a little embarrassed. <laughs> I understand. I understand. I have the same problem. <laughs> he does have a mohawk down his back, which we have done uh, pink one time for a breast cancer awareness event one okay. year. He had pink down his bag and we did some stencils of the ribbon and some hearts, pink hearts on him. So, yeah, like we try to go to like a lot of dog events or, you know, human events and just try to bring awareness to anywhere. Yeah, I know you two are very in sync with each other between your Mohawks. You have, I think, a dog and human hoodie line yeah. and your names. I, that's not coincidental, right? No, it's 
not. Well, the funny thing is, is like my real name is Keone, which is a Hawaiian name, but I'm not Hawaiian. I'm from Kentucky. My nickname I got probably two decades ago when I went to Georgia Southern University. My boss couldn't remember my name and he just asked me where I was from. And I said, Kentucky. And it just kind of stuck. It's a lot easier to introduce people instead of my real name, Keone. But when I got Derby, his name was Midas. Okay. I guess the kids wanted to call him that because of being a little golden doodle. Sure. I was like, man, this name doesn't really fit, man. And so I just put it out on Facebook and told my friends, hey, this is my new road dog. What should I call him? And one of my good friends said, man, you should call him Derby. Kentucky and Derby. I was like, done. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. I love that. That's a great story. Yeah. <laughs> And then I've always had kind of a mohawk. Uh, I was losing my hair at the time. <laughs> and then I never had a dog that needed to be groomed. I've, I've always had dogs all my life, farm dogs. My last dog was a great clean, but I've never had a dog that needed to be scheduled groomed. When I first got him, about three months went by, you couldn't see his eyes. It was like, oh, this is a thing. <laughs> so I asked the groomer to groom him down, but not make him into a poodle. But it's like, can you leave hair on his head like a mole? And she's like, yeah, totally. And then when we moved out here, I found a new groomer. And she was like, you know, I can dye the house. And I was like, oh, that was seven years ago. I was like, I didn't know you could dye dogs' hair. Is it cool? And it, like, it doesn't hurt them? Like, no, it's not. You know, it's perfectly fine with their eyes and their skin. The only color she had was blue. So we just went with blue. And I guess being Kentucky and Kentucky blue, it just really worked out. <laughs> yeah. So did you dye your own mohawk after he started dying? Yes. Is that what happened? So we entered our first surf competition and he had a blue mohawk and everything. And everybody kept saying, you should dye your hair blue. And I was like, no, not as well. I love it. I love it. Neil says that he loves your energy and enthusiasm and your passion and that you're not just doing it. You're living yes. in a rock on. <laughs> a lot of people ask me, it's like, a lot of people ask my wife and everything. It's like, is he like this all the time? It's like, yeah. I mean, when. I really get enthusiastic about things that I'm really into. And sharing Derby with the world is something I've always wanted to do. People think that I do this for a living. And I was like, I wish. But I always after work or on the weekends, I find time to do something or look for an event that we could go to. The book is just something else that I want to put our effort into and see how far we can take it. Maybe we could do a series. But the more kids and more people this guy gets to see is that's all I want to do. Well, I love your slogan. It's what putting smiles on faces. That's right? all it is. That's all we want to do is put smiles on people's faces. <laughs> That's very cool. How do you go about finding things to do with him? It sounds like you're always looking for more fun things. So, yeah. Crazy thing is like moving out to San Diego. There's like a dog festival event every weekend. Facebook and Instagram has definitely helped to get more things out there. I hate weekends when like there's three events we really want to attend and we can only choose one. But we figured out it's all about just choosing and having fun. At the end of the day, like I said, we don't do this to make money. We don't do this just to be popular. We just do it because it's fun and it makes me happy and makes them happy. I love that. Kim wants to know how a kid from Kentucky learns how to surf. <laughs> very, not very easily. <laughs> I had never surfed before. Derby had never seen the beach before until we moved out here seven years ago. Okay. I didn't know how he would like it, but he fell in love with it. He actually didn't know how to swim until I taught him how to swim when we lived in Atlanta in a pool. Okay. But yeah, surfing was just something I wanted to pick up. I kind of skateboarded a little bit. The day I bought my first soft top surfboard and went to OB Dog Beach, which is a good place to learn, I figured Derby would just go play with the other dogs. He was having none of that. He kept following me out of the water all the way to the point where he was swimming. I was like, dude, what are you doing? Let's put him on the board. And I just pushed him in a small wave. And this guy right here rode it all the way to the beach, turned around and looked at me like, is this what you're trying to do? This is pretty easy. I was happy, but mad at the same time because I was like, man, you just learned how to surf before me, but this is pretty cool. And then we kept doing it for a couple of weeks that year. And some guy walked up to us and said, hey, man, you know, they got dog surfing competitions here in San Diego. I was like, what? So I kind of looked it up signed us up for one that was an imperial beach at the time i had never been to a human surf competition let alone a dog surf competition so i had no idea what to do i just kind of watched everybody else we were doing solo events that day and at the end of the day derby got like fifth or sixth out of 30 dogs everybody kind of came up to us and was like dude where did y'all come from how long y'all been doing this and i was like man we've been doing this for six weeks i had no idea what i'm doing <laughs> But like I said, we do like three or four a year. And every year when surf season comes, it's like seeing our surf dog family again and getting to see everybody and catching up and like helping each other out. So like, yeah, this has been our seventh year. 
Next year will be our eight. And unfortunately, I've kind of noticed Derby just getting a little older. It takes a lot out of him doing these long surf day competitions. So we're probably announcing that this is going to be his retirement year next year. But we're going to try to make it to all the surf competitions, including Hawaii again. We might even go to one in Florida if we can make that happen too. So, <laughs> But through that, we're still going to go read books at schools and try to you know go out there and have fun. Yeah. You know, dogs aging is something that we've talked about a lot, specifically like in therapy dog work. But how did you kind of notice that mm, it might be time to step back a little bit from surfing? But it's one of those things like earlier last year, I kind of noticed when we go to the beach just to play, like, you know, playing at uh, an intense level wasn't happening as long. Mm. He was resting a little bit longer at later on, which is like, oh, he's had a hard day. Yeah. But this last time we were surfing, because, you know, I do ask a lot from him sometimes when I'm trying to share with kids or people or fans that come up and I try to like, hey, man, let's just get up and say, hey. And like, you know, we might be a little tired. But this one time, I think we were on our third event that day. It was all day event. And we we're going back out in the surf. <laughs> and usually he stands up on the board and wants to go out there, but he laid down. And I could just tell, I was like, man, yeah, I look in his eyes like, I am beat right now. And I was like, all right, man, I get it. I get it. <laughs> But it's not going to stop us from surfing on our own and just doing our own thing at our own pace at our own time. But events like that, we might have to cut back on a little bit. Yeah, for sure. Kind of similar to that. How do you know that he enjoys therapy work? How does he show you that? Oh, uh, when he sees kids playing around and he knows we're going into a classroom or a nursing home, he's all about it. It's one of those things that I don't know how he picked it up or he knew, but if I kind of snap my finger and point to somebody, He'll immediately look at me and go straight to them and like, oh, I'm getting pet. <laughs> and so he knows he's going to get the attention that he loves. I mean, he loves attention from me, which, you know, he's always looking at me, trying to figure out like, what are we doing next? Trying to read my cues. But he still loves all the other attention from everyone else. That's great. I know you told us the story of the girl in the refugee camps. Is there another story that kind of stands out to you from your therapy work together? Oh, yeah. So we do this one thing with Rady's. Rady's Hospital here in San Diego. Every year they have a walk of, I think it's, I don't want to get it wrong. I know it's walk of champions or something. I forget. I wish I knew off the top of my head. And it's where the kids that have either beat cancer or the ones that have recently passed away, they celebrate celebration of champions. That's what it is. And they had this little walk in the park and, you know, there's music, there's games for the kids to play. We remember the ones who have fought hard, tried to survive, and those who have beat cancer, and you, we celebrate them that day. And we have done it before with Love on the Leash. All the Love on the Leash dogs come out that day and just hang out and just walk around and meet everyone. And one of the best times ever, like this past year, I, we were already signed up to go, but the lady who runs it reached out to Sue that runs the Love on the Leash here and said, hey. We know you're all are coming, but is there any way you can find Kentucky and Derby and, and have them come? I was like, they really wanted us there? They're like, yes, they specifically asked for y'all and we're trying to get a hold of you. I was like, we were already coming. So that was an awesome feeling to know that they remembered us and they knew who we are and the kids that were there knew us and wanted us to come back. That's awesome. Yeah. Kentucky, do you have any advice for someone who's interested in volunteering with their dogs? Yes. Best advice I can say, God, is you need to spend a lot of time with your dog beforehand. A lot of it also is knowing your own dog, reading cues. Dogs always give off cues when they, you know, they're very, very happy or very, very stressed out. And like I said, dogs, some dogs like to be around a lot of people. Some dogs do not. <laughs> some dogs only like individual people. Even men, being around other therapy dogs is another key thing that needs to happen because you will be in a tight spot, tight room with other dogs at close proximity. I try to tell people, and I wish, like, I know I can say that I did this with Derby, but I had gotten Derby when he was a year and a half. But when you get a new puppy, after it's gotten all its shots, I say, 90 days, 90 people. Like, <laughs> let that dog meet as many people as possible, as many dogs as possible after they get their shots, and just be accustomed to being around other people and other dogs and not being afraid. I mean, I wish I had been there for him as a puppy, and it wouldn't have been a, such a a long transition to do that, but like it just takes patience and time and a lot of treats. How did you help him through that? Because you mentioned that he was kind of not so sure about mm -hmm. like, the first. So the first thing is, and I tell people like, because a lot of people think, you know, they want to be like Derby now because we go on a lot of, I call them adventures. Yeah. 
And they might be a little bit more extreme adventures than most people do. And they're like, well, I wish I could do that with my dog and go on adventures. I'm like, you don't understand. Like your dog doesn't know what's an adventure as long as they're with you. Walking yeah. around the neighborhood is an adventure for a dog. You can't take it as like, oh, I'm just exercising. You got to treat it as like, we're going on an adventure. We're getting out of the house. We're just doing something besides sitting on the couch and just hanging out and getting them to acclimate their environment and things that come at them that might surprise them and give them comfort when they need it and the encouragement just to help them get through, you know, whatever startles them and everything else. Yeah. So like, yeah, you don't have to be as adventurous as us, but you can just go and do more things. Taking them to a restaurant that lets dogs out on a patio. That's a real good, because there's a lot of distractions and not a lot of things. And just, you know, telling the dog, like, hey, we're going to hang out here. We're going to understand. Reading their vibe, they're reading your vibes of like how they're feeling. And they get used to it after a while. Yeah, I love that. I love your mindset on everything with your dog is an adventure. Yeah, they don't know. I remember when we were on the show and people were like, you think your dog knows you're in London right now? I said, he thinks we're probably down the street from our house. <laughs> but he knows that I'm here, that everything's going to be okay. And as long as, you know, we're together, we can do anything. And he, he knows like he'll be safe and he'll keep me safe. Awesome. Well, Kentucky, is there anything else that you wanted to share while you're That's about it. Thank you so much for having us. Oh, if you would like to get our book, you can get our book on our website, derbycalifornia.com, or you can get it on Amazon at derbybook.com. We're hoping to do another book, maybe. Until then, we're going to go to schools and hospitals and try to put smiles on everyone's faces. I love it. And if they want to follow all of your yes. adventures, they can find you at Derby California, yep. right? Our Instagram is Derby California and our Facebook is Derby California. And if you live in the San Diego area and you know any school teachers, principals, or school admins, you can have them email us at derbycalifornia at gmail.com. And maybe we can set up an author's visit or even, you know, just another visit for you all to meet Derby. I love that. That's great. Well, thank you so much, Kentucky. I appreciate you and Derby taking the time. Yeah. Thank you so much for having us. Of course. Awesome. Take care. See ya. Bye.